Have you ever wondered about calcium deficiency in autistic kids? Is eye poking one of the things that can tell you that your child has calcium deficiency? <coughs> Excuse me. And how can we ever tell if our children lack calcium? Let's dive in and explore these questions together. Hi, welcome back to our channel. My name is Pearl. Today's video is, is really hard for me, you guys, but I think that it needs to be done. I need your help with this one. As many of you know, Grace was diagnosed just over a year ago, almost two years ago. So that makes us fairly new to the autism family and we have a lot to learn. We know that it is a spectrum and we are not comparing our daughter with someone else's child by no means, but we need all the information we can get. So Grace has been poking the side of her eyes here and there. Before it used to be here and there, too, but now it's mainly here and there. She's been doing that for years now, and it's really starting to worry us. At first, her medical team thought it was allergies or maybe pink eye. So they asked us to try prescribed eye drops, but that didn't work. It didn't seem to make a difference at all. Then we were advised to give her Claritin kids, thinking it might help if it was allergy related. But even with that medication, there were times when she'd still poke around her eyes. Um, that's when I started to doubt whether it was allergies at the time. So I delved into some research, trying to understand why Grace might be doing this. One, possible, one possibility that kept coming up was a calcium deficiency. And to me, it made sense, especially considering her last lab result that showed she was low in almost everything. And Grace, well, she's quite a picky eater, making it challenging for her to get all the nutrients she needs. There was a time Gracie was only eating mac and cheese. Mac and cheese for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. That's all she was eating. You know, despite trying to supplement her diet with a multivitamin, an extra vitamin C and vitamin D, it seems like it might not be enough. I don't think that's enough because the poking is getting worse. <clears throat> but it's not just the poking that worries me. It's the potential consequences. I've read stories about kids who have accidentally poked their eyes out. You know, some of them poked it so hard they needed surgery to fix them. Oh God, this is sad. Some even lost their eyesight altogether. The idea that Grace can be in pain. And this is one of the things when I read, this is one of the things I saw, is that because of the calcium deficiency, they have pain in the eye, like the eyeball is hurting them. So in order to release some of that pain, to relieve them of that pain, they poke the eye. Because I remember one day asking my husband, does she not feel the pain? Because it's already cut. And she's, even if we cut her nail, how low it is, she is putting her finger in a way where she can find some nail and she will just poke it and squeeze it there are times it bleeds you guys it bleeds and I sometimes ask is she not feeling the pain right but when I read about the calcium deficiency it kind of makes sense to me for Gracie it kind of makes sense to me you know and I thought that, that some kids have even lost their eyesight Yo, this is scary. This is one of the things I'm very scared of. The idea that Grace could be in pain and trying to alleviate it by poking her eyes breaks my heart, you guys. It literally breaks my heart. Initially, I thought maybe it was just itchy, but upon closer observation, it seems more like she's seeking pressure in that, in that area. Because when I realized that, I said, okay, let me try to apply some pressure. And I squeezed on that area for her. And when I did that, it's like she just laid back like relief, right? She just went back like this and she stayed there so quietly. And I kept on um, applying that pressure. It wasn't too much pressure, but I applied a little bit of pressure for her. 
and she seemed to be okay with that, right? We've, we've tried everything to protect Gracie's skin and prevent her from hurting herself. We've tried band-aids, we've tried putting Duradum, we've tried putting Hyperfix, you name it, we've done all of it. There, this week I put, I put gauze, then I put a piece of Duradum, then I put a large piece of Hyperfix, thinking that the small piece, she grabs it and pulls it out. But I put a larger piece thinking, okay, that one is big enough to hold, she will not be able to. I sent Gracie to school, and Gracie came back with one. One she pulled off, one stayed, right? But she always finds a way to remove them. And sometimes she even put them, guys, sometimes she even puts this in her mouth, which is another scary thought. Like I said, larger dressing than necessary just to make it harder for her to pull them off. In all honesty, I feel utterly powerless. As a parent, all I want to do is keep my child safe. But it seems like no matter what we try, we can't stop her from harming herself. It, it, it is really sad. And I'm asking you guys, if any one of you have been through something similar with your own child or know someone who has, I would really appreciate any advice or insight you might have. You know, it, it, it is sad when you are at a point where something is happening to your child and you have no answer, no matter what you do, it's, 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 not, it's not helping, you know? So this is where we're at and I am praying that things will get better. Next week, God's willing, we have to go back to the hospital to do another set of labs for her. So I am hoping that, I don't know, I don't know, I don't even know because if, by now it has not changed i don't think by next week it will change but i'm really curious as to um the level of her calcium and her magnesium vitamin d i mean vitamin d i can expect that because we live in a in a in a country where most of the year it is cloudy it is fall winter you know this takes a long time i'm really hoping with the extra vitamin D, the extra vitamin C, and the multivitamin that we are giving her, I'm really hoping to see a change, that things have improved, but reading what I have read and seeing what Gracie is doing, if I were to see that her calcium is low or she's deficient in calcium, it wouldn't surprise me, it wouldn't at all. So let me know if you guys have gone through this or know of someone who's gone through it. And let's chat in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. And I just want to thank you for taking the time to listen to our story. And please, if you have any suggestions or experiences to share, don't hesitate to comment below. And if you found this video helpful or informative, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Please continue to watch our videos because we will be doing an update on this video as soon as we, are, we, we get the results of a lab work. Um, in, in, in a few weeks' time, Gracie has many appointments with different specialists. I am hoping that we can get to the bottom of it. We have been working closely with her team, especially her dietitian, concerning this. Um, Gracie's diet has improved tremendously. Um, she is no longer, I'm no longer giving Gracie mac and cheese, but I am giving a wholesome food. Um, she is taking more stuff. For example, she's taking beans and she's taking, um, pumpkin. She's taking potatoes. Um, she was taking potatoes, but only mashed potato. But now she's taking more. Even rice. Gracie is eating rice. Thank God. She's eating all of these things. But Grace is not eating the meat. But I am hoping that more and more we can put more stuff in Grace's diet. Um, she's taking more vegetables now. So I am really hoping that her lab work will show improvement. And things will turn around for Gracie. I don't know. I don't know. I find like when changes come... I see Gracie poking herself more. 
um, for example if we're switching her from one school to another she will do that she will have that behavioral problem if she's coming down with a cold or some illness I find that she's doing that more so really I am not sure what is causing that but I'm really really interested in seeing Gracie's calcium level and working with her team and then we can get to the bottom of this because it is very scary and I worry a lot about Gracie especially when she's not in our care she's in school I worry a lot about it and Gracie is in a good school and they they usually text me and tell me she's okay don't worry she's doing well she's happy blah 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 but at the same time you know seeing how she does it it kind of it, it worries me it's not just it kind of it worries me I hope that you guys will talk to me and I hope that things will get better for Grace not just hope I believe that things will get better for Grace but we just need to find out why she's doing this and if calcium deficiency has any role to play in this kind of behavior so guys thank you so much for watching until next time take care of yourselves bye for now